Okay, so he's asking, what if you're doing all of these actions and it's still so routine that you're not feeling the connection and, it, and it's just not having an effect? If that's the case, then there are, there are certain reasons why that might be the case. Number one cause of that is sin that we don't repent for. Sins that we don't repent for. So you may be committing sins that you're not repenting for and those sins are what's kind of creating a crust over your heart so you can't connect to Allah. So, it's, But the reason I didn't mention that is it's actually included in the morning and evening adhkar is um, tawbah, istighfar. That's why I didn't mention it, but I should mention it, you know, just to expl explicitly say it. Included in these three things is tawbah. It has to be in there. Istighfar has to be in there because istighfar is taking a bath for your heart. And no one can say that, yes, I eat, I take in oxygen, I exercise, but yeah, I took a, sh I took a bath last October, so I'm fine. And that's because, um, you know, you, you constantly have to clean. That's what istighfar is. It cleans the sin and the effect of sin off of the heart. But the reason I didn't mention it is because it's already in the adhkar of morning and evening and, um, and sleep. It, specifically, Sayyidul Istighfar. Sayyidul Istighfar is a dua in, from a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said was the, the best dua for seeking forgiveness. And he said if anyone says this dua in the evening and they die before the, um, the morning, they will enter Jannah. And if they say it in the morning and they die before the evening, they will enter Jannah. So Sayyid al-Istighfar actually is in your apps um, for morning and evening adhkar. It's the one that begins, Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani wa ana abduk, that dua. And this dua is one of the best for, for cleaning the heart. So that's one of the main reasons why that happens, what you're saying, is because of our sins. And the second thing I'm going to say of a cause of that, that phenomenon or, or, or that ailment of being disconnected from Allah, even though we're doing actions, is... Um, some sort of attachment in the heart uh, that is blocking us from Allah. It's uh, loving something as we should only love Allah. We'll do that too. So if it's our job, if it's our money, if it's our spouse, if it's our children, anything that is actually becoming a block. And so I might be praying, I might be reading Quran, I might be doing everything in that list, but my heart is actually... Um, the reason that it's blocked from Allah is because I've put something else in the center where only Allah should be. And sometimes it might be my career, it might be my job, could be school, could be, you know, my spouse. That's another reason why that happens. You're not praying. You don't have oxygen in your blood. You don't have oxygen in your body. That's the reason. So, so that is actually the very first thing you have to focus on. Your salah is the first question you're going to be asked about on the Day of Judgment. Your salah is the first question you're going to be asked about on the Day of Judgment. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if your salah is in order, then you will be successful. And if it's not, you will have failed. Okay? So that's, actually that one should have been number one. And number two was the dua app. Okay? But it doesn't matter. The point is, these are the two. Okay? One and two. So one is the salah, which is your oxygen. Number two is the dua app after Fajr and after Asr. The third time that you can use the dua app and I highly recommend is before you sleep. Before you sleep, you click on even or you click um, sleep, the du'as for sleep before, before, before bed. Number three is Quran. That there, sh there should be some connection to the Quran daily. Some connection to the Quran daily, reading, understanding, implementing, reflecting, whatever. These three things, if you do them, if you do these three things, it, it, it's, it's like putting on an armor, layers and layers of, of armor when you go on a battlefield. And if you aren't doing these things, I'll tell you what it's like. It's like a person who has no oxygen, no armor, and goes out to the battlefield. Anyone know what's gonna happen to them? Okay, they're not breathing and they don't have any armor. How long are they gonna last? How many seconds can you last without oxygen? Any doctors wanna tell me? Not, not even five minutes, okay? So the point here is you're gonna start getting brain dead and then you're gonna die. I'm sure, I mean, come on, we have like Indopex in here, come on. 
No, but mashallah. <laughs> so we, you're gonna, you're gonna, the oxygen's gonna be out of your bloodstream, right? And then you have no armor, so you're gonna be shot down. And that's, that's what happens if you're not praying and you don't have dhikr in your life and you don't have connection to Qur'an. When you do, you're oxygenated and you have the armor and then that's how you get protected. But here's the other thing I want to remind you. If you do it once and then you don't do it, it's, it's like, okay, no, I don't need to breathe today. I did that yesterday. That doesn't work, right? I don't need to eat today. I did that, you know, a week ago. This is something you have to do consistently to keep yourself protected.